How to build and deploy a Symfony application using Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.346.2, and attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent with Heroku CLI installed on it. Down in the description of this video is a link to the sample repository that we're going to be using in this video. And let's take a look at that sample repository. This repository is a basic Symfony application, and this project was created using Composer. So it was Composer, Create Project, Symfony Skeleton, and then specific version number. And then we have most of these files that were generated here. Now I say most of the files, because there were a couple of other files that I added. Specifically, I added a Jenkins file and a Docker file. Let's go and take a look at the Docker file first. What you can see here is we're going to be using a multi-stage Docker file. So in the first part of this, we're just saying Composer, at the time of recording, this was the latest version, 2.3.8, and this is going to be our build stage. Since our app is within app, we're going to copy everything into there. We run our standard Composer install, and I added in the annotations, because I'm using annotations to define the routes for my controllers. Then we're going to be using the official PHP image for 8.1.8 that also has Apache baked into it. And from here, we set up an environment variable. We copy the files over that were built inside of app into var www.html. And then we start making some changes to Apache. One of the things that we'll need to do because of where the application is built within this app directory is we need to change our var www.html to html slash public because within the app directory is the public directory. And we're having to do that on our default site within Sites Enabled. We set up our permissions, we set up ownership, we set up rewrite, and then finally, since we are going to be deploying this to Heroku, we need to change where Apache is listening and specifically what port. In this case, we need to replace port 80 with the literal dollar sign brace port. And we need to do this in two files. First off in our default file, which we also have made a change to up here, and then also to ports. We also removed the entry point. And instead, we're just going to run a command docker php entry point apache2 foreground. So this overrides the existing entry point that was within this image. And we're going to give it just the command that we want. Now let's go take a look at our Jenkins file. This is a very basic Jenkins file to where we're going to be using the Heroku API key, which is going to be a credential that we're going to be using so we can interact from the command line. We're going to do a Docker build. We're going to log into the Heroku container registry. We're going to tag and push our image up to the Heroku registry. Then we're going to go ahead and release the image or start the application. And then finally, we're going to do a logout from the registry. So one of the things that we need to do is we need to set up an application on the Heroku side. The app name that I want to use is Jenkins Example Symphony. So I'm going to copy this. Let's go over to Heroku. I'm going to create a new app. I'm going to paste in the app name of Jenkins Example Symphony. We'll create the app. OK, so now the app is set up and ready to accept this container image. Next up, we need to create our credential in order to be able to interact with this application. So let's go get the credential. It's under my profile. I'll go to Account Settings. And then I'm going to scroll down to API key. I'm going to reveal the API key and copy this key. So I've copied that. Let's go over to our controller. We'll click on Manage Jenkins. We'll click on Manage Credentials. And this credential type is of type secret text. So we'll say Add Credentials. We'll change this to Secret Text. I'm going to put the value of that secret into secret. And then in order to match this up, I'm just going to copy the ID of the credential from my Jenkins file and put it into ID and description. And let's click on Create. So at this point, we have our Heroku application set up. We have our credential set up within our Jenkins controller. Now we're ready to create the job. Let's go back to Dashboard, New Item. Let's call this Symphony. We'll click on Pipeline and click OK. While I'm waiting for that to come up, let's go ahead and go back over to our repository. And then we'll go to Code. We'll copy this, go back to Symphony. We'll go down here, change pipeline script from SCM. We'll change the SCM to Git. We'll paste in the URL. We'll change the branch specifier to main. And let's verify that the script path is Jenkins file. Go ahead and click on Save, and then click on Build Now. And now that the job completed successfully, before we go take a look at the application, let's go take a look at one more thing within our project. If we click on source and click on controller, I created this home controller. 
And this is what we're going to be expecting to see once we go to the page. We've set up a route that's at the base of our application, and it's just going to say, hello world. So this is what we're expecting to see when we go over to our application. Let's go back over to our app within Heroku. Let's go over to settings. We'll scroll down and grab the URL, which is your app can be found at. So we'll open that up in a new tab and we get an application error. Well, how do we debug this? Let's go into our console and see what the logs look like. So let me go ahead and pull up a shell here, which I have behind, put this back up here. And let's run the command Heroku logs for our application, which is symphony T. When we take a look at the output of this, we see that there is an error. There's a configuration error, more than one NPM loaded. Now, specifically for Heroku, when this container started up, it had Apache in it, but Heroku also has Apache running in their routers as well, or some variant of that. So what we have to do in order to get around this problem, specifically for Heroku, is we need to enable, and I'm going to grab that item here. Actually, I'm gonna type it out. We're gonna type Heroku labs enable, then we're going to specify our application, app equals Jenkins-example-symphony. And we're going to specify runtime new layer extract. I did some research on this, found this is what we needed to fix. So let's just enter this. And now we can see that we have the runtime new layer extract is enabled. But now what we need to do is we need to restart. We don't need to rebuild, but we just need to restart. So we'll type Roku PS restart dash dash app equals Jenkins example symphony. And we need to specify web. And we're restarting the web dyno. In fact, if we go back up to our logs, we can see it restarting here. So we can see it's starting, starting the process. And now everything seems to be okay. Unlike before where we went from starting to crashed, here we're starting and we're now at up. So now if we go back over to our application and we refresh this page, what we're going to see is what we expected from our controller, Hello World. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.